Hi good people, welcome to my channel. If you like the content, please consider liking, subscribing, and turning it on the post notification bell so you'll know when I post future content because I'm going to get into a lot of crazy topics. So today I want to get into China's economy because I've been watching China for the better part of a decade now. I think they have a rather interesting story within that country and I became very intrigued by it so long before the 2020 sickness and the world shutting down and I always had this curiosity with China so in doing so I learned how their government operates and you know how their country operates it was very very interesting and their government just like our American government they're always doing something so I became very, very interested in these topics, but I want to talk about how a lot of their policies that they've enacted over the years, especially since 2020, when the world got sick and shut down, all of those policies are now backfiring because you have protests, something I never thought I will see in my lifetime, Chinese people actually standing up against the Chinese government because Chinese people quietly have this agreement with the Chinese government. When they took power in 1949, they asked the Chinese people, basically, stay out of politics and we'll grow the country economically and we'll make the country rich. We'll bring a lot of people out of poverty. So in doing so, y'all agree to this authoritarian nation and we'll be good. So the Chinese people kind of gave up a little bit of their freedoms and that's how authoritarian governments work. But in being an authoritarian government, I think they've gone a little bit too far because China is a part of globalization. We all know that they manufacture all of our goods that are traded across the globe. China has been doing that at a record-breaking scale for the better part of 40 years now. It went from made in America and transitioned to made in China. And it has been that way for several decades now. Well, in all of that economic growth and all of that economic boom comes a lot of borrowing. So the Chinese government, they're not like the American government where you know, they have to go ask Congress and then go to the Senate and then the president signs off on it or he may veto it or whatever the case may be. No, it's one man, their leader, who dictates everything. One man rules 1.4 billion people. But that's how an authoritarian nation is ran, a communist nation. That's how Putin uh, 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 he wants to run his nation that's how the Soviet ran theirs and that's how that's that influence but the government going back to debt debt grows an economy right but they just like America allow loose monetary policy they allowed the banks to loosen policy so that more people can come in and borrow money and most people in China invest in real estate. They don't trust the stock market. They don't trust other investments. And the closest thing to accumulating wealth is through real estate because in that 40 year growth, everything was going up. You couldn't lose. So families, multi-generations would get together and they would pull their money together and buy real estate together. They'll finance a portion of it and they'll put their down payment down. But they'll collectively, the auntie, the cousin, the friend, the grandma, I'm talking multi-generations of money because home ownership is very, very important in China. It, it, it decides whether a young man is gonna get married and all types of things. So families usually have young men, one child, through their one child policies, right? That screwed up their demographics now, which is why they don't have a lot of young people. Not a lot of people having babies. 
because through the one child policy, they prefer men. Men can dominate in agriculture. Men can dominate in war. Men can everything, right? So they prefer men. Right now, it's a demographic imbalance. It's something like 30 million men in China who has never had a girlfriend. Never know what it's like to touch a woman because the imbalance is so much there. Because they produce more men than w girls, there's not a lot of girls. So the girls have a pick of the litter. That's why home ownership is so important because the young men entice the women with the homes. Here, I can provide for you. So that determines whether a young man is going to get married. So the real estate market, boom, all it is debt. Something to the tune of like $97 trillion a real estate market is. And Chinese people go abroad. Because let me tell you how Chinese real estate works. Chinese is a communist regime, a communist government. No one person in China, no Chinese citizen, no foreigners especially, can own land. The state, the government owns 100% of the land. The developers that developed the homes and built them, they lease under a 70 year lease the land from the government. And then they build up because China has 1.4 billion people. So they built a lot of apartments up. So their real estate is not like America, Australia, where you got a lot of leg room, a big backyard. Not a lot of them are buying apartments and that generated a bubble to the point where there's these things called ghost cities in China. They have something to the tune of 90 million vacant apartments. And then they have these great elaborate showcasings with these pre sale homes and show them the models and it's so beautiful. But those ghost cities are abandoned now. People buy them out of speculation just because the market was running up like crazy. And you think that bubble not going to pop? Because the government allowed all of this debt to happen because the developers funnel the money up to the government. They have to lease the land from the government. The government was getting that money and it was all good until it was not good no more in 2022. I mean, Evergrande popped off everything once Evergrande said we can't we can't do what we need to do it shut down the whole Chinese housing market Ch Chinese citizens was panicking all over the place we're not going to get our homes because how pre pre-sale homes work in China Chinese citizens would go and buy the homes before they were even built they will look at those beautiful models and they will say, this will be your home and we'll give it, it'll, it'll be finished in two years. So they make their mortgage payments. They continuously pay for two years. And then at the end of that two years, they get told by Evergrande, we won't be able to deliver your, your property. So they start losing it, protesting, running down on the banks. What's going on? Give us our money or give us our property. And there's no better business business bureau or no sec security exchange commissions where you go to in china most people try to run to beijing beijing is the ccp they let all this stuff pop off and then they say oh it's gotten too bad they'll blame it on a local banker or a local politician and say it was corruption they will not the ccp will their their government will not take ownership they'll blame it on something else so the people won't look at them with pitchforks. And so they'll loosen, they'll loosen up policies, print money, whatever it do to satisfy that. But then they have this bright idea to abruptly introduce the three red lines. This stopped developers who build the apartments from being able to borrow money from the state run state state owned banks banks are not private in china they're all owned by the government nobody really owns anything in china everything is owned by the government that's why a lot of chinese citizens who do get their hands on some real money they go abroad they be in canada australia the united states everywhere buying up property where you could actually buy and own property 
and pass it down to your kids. Them ghost cities, they just sitting there. 90 million unused apartments. People bought them, they're all owned by somebody in China. They're all owned by somebody. They're just not occupied. They're owned for speculation. They were told when they looked at those beautiful models, oh, this is going to be a, a booming city and a lot of people are going to come here. A lot of jobs are going to be around here and this is going to thrive and you're going to be able to sell it for multi-million dollars of y yuans and renbi and bs and get, get your money, right? So speculation, everybody was buying it for future sake. But they got, they got their apartments. They're just sitting there vacant. You have a whole group of people who are not going to get theirs. That's why they're protesting. They're protesting for a bunch of different reasons. And it's a beautiful thing to see. <clears throat> it's, it's unfortunate. But as long as I've been watching them, it is so refreshing to see them stand up. Because their government just run over them won't allow them to say nothing they cannot access the free market not free thinking no the chinese government do not allow the internet in china people be thinking people in china is just like browsing the internet that we're on no china has their own version of the internet they have their own version of tiktok their own version of google their own that's where tiktok is from they just duplicated they have their own Chinese version and they just duplicated it, made an American version. It popped off in America. So there's two versions of TikTok. The Chinese people, they cannot access the American version of TikTok. They just can't. And if they ask, you, you have VPNs, virtual private networks. They can, it's, it's against the law to have a VPN, which blocks, it gives you, it, it allows you to surf the internet anonymously. You know, you could state whatever country you say and you're from. China don't allow that. That's outlaw. So their people are not accessing YouTube, Google, Facebook, Twitter. It's against the law. You got to be a government official or something to get that. Other than that, you get the Chinese version that's censored and monitored by the government. And anything you say that they don't like, they take it off, delete it, block it. This is how they live. They don't know half the stuff that's going on in the world because... They only get access to what their government is allowing them to see. It's called propaganda. So they, the government, it's a version of brainwashing. It's what they do. It's amazing how many crazy policies China government has come up with. And no matter how weird it looks to the Western world or to the outside world, they don't care. They will save face and keep moving forward like we don't care. And we out here scratching our head like the shutdown. The rest of the world is moving on about their life. Going on about their life. China just now mass outbreaks in. It's like 2020 all over again for them. They keep getting sucked back into it. And China, when they lock down, they lock them down. One case in a, in a city of 25 million people, the whole 25 million getting locked down. No more movement. These are the crazy policies that this country has. And I'll be sitting back scratching my head like, seriously? I know these people are tired. That's why I said it's so refreshing to see the Chinese people standing up and protesting. I literally am so proud of them. I didn't think I would see this in my lifetime. I'm glad I have because it's amazing. Due to China's policy, they're losing manufacturing, businesses all across the globe. Apple just now got the hint and all of them pulling out. China is changing and restructuring forever and their policies is what did it. Crazy wacky policies that I'm gonna keep looking for because I can never get enough of Chinese government. Policies, very important, but until next time, bye.